welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about an author named Anna Marie McLenmore. And she is, I think, a Latina, um, she's a Latina writer and most of her books are inspired by the Latin America. So one of them is called The Weight of Feathers, which is about, it's like a Romeo and Juliet-ish take on like a circusy family. And then the second one is Blanca and Roja, which is about a family who has a history of the two daughters, one of them turning into a swan. As always, thank you so much for watching. Free, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you'll be aware of when I post and uh, let's get into the video. So I'm going to start today with The Weight of Feathers. I thought The Weight of Feathers would be better. <laughs> I think I read Blanca and Roja first and I really enjoyed the lyrical musical writing in that and I expected that to be on the same level in The Weight of Feathers and I just, I just didn't feel like it was. I don't feel like it was much less but I felt like it was less and that disappointed me. So the two protagonists are Cluck and Lace and they are they are deeply within this lifelong rivalry between these two families called the Corbos and the Palomas, which I'm sure I butchered those. The Paloma women are known for their mermaid act and the Corbos are known for their tree climbing, like angel-esque acts. And they don't talk, they don't mingle, they have, they, they do not encounter whatsoever. I felt like the romance wasn't as well developed as I had hoped. Um, with the mix between the lyrical writing not being what like up to par with what I'm used to with Anna Marie McLemore's books, I didn't feel like the romance was as well developed as she could nor as she normally does for me. I have not read Wild Beauty, which is one that she's like really well known for. I started it, but I just didn't get into it as much. There was a twist in this book, but honestly, I wasn't as dedicated to reading as reading as I normally am. Like it didn't suck me in enough that I felt like the twist was like, <gasps> I was just more like, oh, it's a plot twist. Cool. Um, and that kind of frustrated me because usually when there's a decent plot twist, I want to just be like surprised and shocked and it flying off the page. And it really wasn't with this book. It just didn't wow me. I expected it to wow me a lot more than it did. I think because it had so many things that I thought was interesting that I was just ready to be blown away. And when, it, when anything is compared to Romeo and Juliet, like I'm here for it, but I am also a huge, huge judge because I loved Romeo and Juliet. I own the, I own copies of the original play and not just the Cliff Notes version like I go back and I reread it I love the 1960s version like I love Romeo and Juliet so I think that kind of set me back a little bit because I was so excited about that um about the idea of it being relatable to Romeo and Juliet that it just made it a little disappointing in my eyes so the second book that I read is Blanca and Roja and this book was beautiful it had some gorgeous writing I mean oh my gosh it talked about like like honeysuckle apples or like snow dripped berries like it just oh it just had the most beautiful writing in it and I honestly think that's what made me so frustrated with the weight of feathers because the writing in this book was exactly what I expect Anna Marie McLemore's books to be which is just like stunning imagery all the way around and this book had it in spades um what it did lack I felt was a little bit on the plot development where I did feel like the plot was more developed in The Weight of Feathers, I felt like it was a little lacking in this book. So Blanca and Roja stands for the two sisters that are the protagonists of the books. Blanca being the girl who's very fair skinned and you know has beautiful blonde hair and Roja being the girl who has like really black hair but it's almost like dripped in blood and she's known for being like red rose and I think Blanca might be known for like snow white so like red riding hood and snow white kind of mashed up together and thrown in like a latina mix is essentially what we're going for here and like I said it was gorgeous I really loved both the sisters I think I identified more a little bit with Blanca's character because she was just she was always known for being very kind and delicate and Roja was always known for being like the bull in a china shop and I, like I said, I cared for both of them. I wanted them both to be safe. And the whole plot line follows the fact that one of them will be turned into a swan at some point. That is the way that this family has always been. There's always two daughters that are born, no matter how many children, there's always two. And one of them gets taken by the swans for one reason or another. 
I don't want to give too much away in the plot, so I'm going to leave it at that. But I will also talk about two other main characters in the book, which are the two boys. So the first one is Paige Ashby. And I, I don't want to give too much away, but I felt Paige Ashby's character was written very well. It was written very delicately and it was written very appropriately. And it made me really, really respect the author for writing this character. And I just, I really enjoyed reading from their point of view. So the other character's name is Barclay and his character is very like tough and masculine and his kind of fairy tale was that he was turned, he was like in a, he was a bear for a little bit, but it wasn't really like a huge plot. Uh, it wasn't like a plot twist or anything. So um, I, I don't feel as scary like telling you guys, but I did, I enjoyed his character. I enjoyed both the boys. I loved the girls. I thought that this book was handled well. And I just, I really love the magical realism. And like I said, this, this book is what I expect Anna Marie McLennamore's books to be. Um, just gorgeous imagery, well, like sparkling characters that just kind of like fly off the page and almost like you're reading a fairy tale with all of the magic kind of like enveloped in the book. So if I was going to recommend one of these books, I would definitely be recommending Blanca and Roja. If I was going to rate these books, I would give The Weight of Feathers probably a 5 out of 10 and I would give Blanca and Roja a 7 out of 10 because I felt like I felt like Blanca and Roja just had that extra little bit of something and I did think the the writing was decent I thought the plot was decent and the weight of feathers but I just didn't feel like it was as well developed for what it should have been I know this video is a little bit on the shorter side. It tends to be when I am doing book reviews because I kind of just know exactly what I'm thinking and I don't unless it's like a polarizing book I don't feel the need to share a whole lot of opinions um I hope you guys liked it though feel free again to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and thank you so much bye